Hey guys, how we doing today? Sorry I haven't been back in a while. It's been about a week or more. Um, so I'm coming back with another video. Uh, there was a comment in one of the videos that asked me about uh, the difference between sending in like a standard sized item versus an oversized item. And there's a lot of confusion there. And I think a lot of misconceptions as far as, you know, what to do and how that works. So I'm going to cover that today. And I'm going to go over the different things that you have to consider when you're going to do a bigger item. Uh, kind of like my specialty is doing bigger items. However, it wasn't like I just decided to do that. I kind of fell into it, and it kind of works out, and I realized all the advantages to it, and that's kind of why I do it. However, it's okay to do a standard size item. I actually encourage you to get it in the standard size if you can, because it's going to save you a lot of money in multiple ways. So without further ado, let's get into it. And... First thing I want to I want to start with, if you see on the screen here, you'll see that you know you have standard sized versus oversized. Uh, and if you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. Or don't like and then subscribe. I'd appreciate that too. Uh, that really helps me out. So thank you guys so much for the support. Um, so standard sized item. So when we're talking about Amazon FBA, you know what is a standard sized item and what qualifies for a standard sized item? So I've pulled up the information right here under Seller Central. This is going to give you an idea of what a standard size item actually is, or it's going to tell you exactly what a standard size item is. So here's a mistake you might have seen in my past videos. I was actually one centimeter over that 18 inches on the longest side, and I lost over $20,000 because of that. And that's no joke. $20,000 in profit of sales were lost because of being over 18 inches. I didn't know. I just didn't know. And by the time I figured it out and put in for it, I wasn't able to get reimbursed. Now. The way this works is if you get a measurement and it comes up under 18 inches and they've been charging you for over 18 inches, you can submit um, a, a case to go back 90 days. I will tell you it's extremely difficult. I had to submit three cases and the third case I finally got a reimbursement and I still can't tell you how they calculated the reimbursement because it was more than what I expected, which was good, but it probably was correct. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because I was just doing an estimate. Um, so I ended up getting like 1800 bucks back, which was great. So I did get it back. <clears throat> At first, they said I'm getting $150 back. Well, first, they said I get like $20 back. So I resubmitted. But that doesn't make any sense. Then they came back, and I resubmitted with every single... I went through, and you can pull up a report on your Amazon account. And I went through, and I printed up every single... It took me forever. I had to do it manually by hand. And I had to copy and paste. It took me hours. And I put every single transaction that I should be reimbursed for. And then I sent that in. Then they came back and they said, oh, you know, you're due $150 back. And I'm like, that's insane. It doesn't make any sense. I've sent every single transaction to prove it. You're wrong. Please go back and look at it again. And then when they went back again, finally, after probably three or four weeks, they came back with a number that was like $1,800. So... It's very difficult. I, I highly recommend if you can avoid having to do that, please do. Because the simple fact is, you don't know if they're even going to give you the right amount back, if they're going to take care of it at all. It took me, like I said, three times to get get that resolved. I am going to have to do it again because there's been an issue with one of my other uh, variations. So I will have to revisit that as much of a nightmare as I can be. So avoid that. So how do you avoid that? No, standard size item. It has to be under 18 inches. On the longest side, 14 inches on the median side, 8 inches on the shortest side. Now, what you can do to avoid that, and I've talked about this in a previous video, you can get it put in a box. And it doesn't even matter if it's just a cardboard box, right? It doesn't have to be a logoed box. Although, if you're trying to get approved for that error code 560, 5665, yes, you're going to need a printed logo on the box itself or on the product itself. Um, so if you have a bag in there or if you have... Um, the item itself that has like a imprinted logo on it, you're fine. You can take pictures of that. If you don't, you have to have a printed logo on the box. It used to be you could send in ones with stickers on the box of your logo, but I, I understand they're not accepting that anymore. So that's a whole other issue, uh, the 5665 error. However, I'm telling you this, is you can put this in a cardboard box. If your item, such as mine, has the logo on it, you don't have to worry about it being in a cardboard box. If you get that error and you need to submit it to Amazon, you can take it out of the box, submit it to Amazon as the item itself with a logo on it. So that takes care of that. 
So you can't have it in a typical just regular cardboard box. And that cardboard box, if it's under these specifications and under the, the weight, if you see right here, it goes up to 20 pounds, okay? So if you're under 20 pounds or under with that measurement, you can get into the standard size. And why is that so important versus an oversized? Like, you know, what other fees would you pay for an oversized? And that's what I'm going to break down for you. So let's say it's unavoidable. You have to go above this size or you have to go above this weight, one or the other or both, right? So you're in either a small oversize, which a lot of people will be in. Um, what's going to happen? Why is it going to be so much more expensive? Can't you just ship it into Texas and, you know, it's a little more money that, to fulfill, right? Uh, unfortunately not. So anytime you go over the, this 18 inches, it puts you in the oversized category. And what that means is that when you're going to be shipping in from China, which most people are, if you're shipping it from somewhere else, the same rule still applies. Um, so shipping it from Mexico, I've heard one person doing. If you're shipping in from Pakistan or wherever you're shipping in from, it doesn't make a difference. Here's the point. You're going to have to ship this to multiple addresses, and it won't be to Texas. Almost certainly not. I've never had to ship to Texas because they're so overloaded to begin with. So, and, and that brings me to a quick story, which is this might happen to you. And if it does, you know, don't immediately panic. So I use a freight forwarder. Uh, I've been using him for a while. He's absolutely great. Um, you know, it gives me the best prices and and is very reliable. And I've used him for for a while. And I've recommended him to multiple people. So what happened to me and, and why I've been off for so long to dealing with that and multiple other issues um, that pro other personal issues that don't have to do with Amazon. Um, what happened was I was supposed to have a large shipment shipped to Texas for standard sized items. And they were delivered to California, and I was freaking out. And I'm thinking, how the heck does this get messed up? Either UPS screwed up, or the labels were screwed up somehow, or, you know, it was redirected incorrectly. Something happened. So I'm freaking out, thinking, I'm going to get my account potentially suspended. You know, Amazon's going to come down on me, uh, charge me fees for having it shipped to the wrong warehouse. So, you know, I didn't panic. I, I, I did I was, well, I was a little panicked. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, how do you not be when you have 1,500 units or whatever or over 1,000 units going to the wrong address? So I, I messaged my supplier, excuse me, my forwarder, and they were on holiday. It was a national holiday. And I said, look, I said, you know, this is uh, my, my stuff went to the wrong address. What's going on? Exclamation mark, you know. And I know he was on vacation, and I know he was on a national holiday. He eventually did get back to me and he said, I'll check into it. And I said, you know, either way, we'll work it out. Whatever it may be, if I have to pay fees, I just hope my account doesn't get suspended. It was my biggest worry, you know. So I sat and I waited. And sometimes it's the hardest thing to do, uh, wait for your supplier to get your information or wait for your supplier to get your stuff done or wait for your shipper to get it shipped. It's a waiting game and it can be very frustrating. And in this case, I was very worried because I didn't, you know, didn't know why it was going to the wrong address. He came back and said Amazon redirected the shipment to go to California because Texas FTW1 was just too backed up. And Amazon gave me no notification that happened. Nothing. I mean, I still don't have anything from Amazon stating that happened, which is crazy because how does that, like, I had no idea. They must have directed UPS to take it there. So they got me freaking out thinking I did something wrong or even though I didn't personally do it, I'm still responsible for that shipment. And I'm freaking out, thinking, man, this is this is not right. This is, uh, you know, this is going to the wrong place. I'm thinking my forwarder is either responsible for this, or I, I didn't think it was my supplier because I, sh I shipped in the labels via email, and they put them on the box. It it's kind of hard to mess up. They could happen. Um, but for the number of boxes and the weight and the size, it, it wouldn't make any sense. So I figured it was either UPS or the forwarder had to had to screw something up. So I was waiting patiently, even though underneath of it all, I was I was panicking a little bit. Um, but yeah, come to find out UPS was redirected by Amazon to deliver to California warehouse. Then it didn't at all inform me. So they got me freaking out. They got my forwarder freaking out. I don't know what the heck's going on. So if it ever happens to you, I've never heard it happen to anybody. Um, it happened to me. So it's going to give you massive stress levels because, you know, if you have thousands of units coming, being made and coming in and something happens to your account, especially in Q4 and Prime Day was coming up. You know, you could lose thousands upon thousands of dollars. Uh, you could lose, and you may lose, all your inventory may be stuck. You might have to get a lawyer. It can be an absolute mess. So 
if you think your stress levels go down when you start selling good, you're wrong. They're probably likely to go up. However, you're making money, so that changes a lot of things, right? Anyway, I want to tell you guys that story because it's a really big deal. Uh, if it happens to you, you know, try not to panic, but it may be because Amazon redirected them because of how busy it is lately. So anyway, let's get back to this. I don't mean to get off topic too much. Um, so if you're going to sit in a small oversize, anything over 20 pounds, and, and these measurements, 14, 18, 14, 8, uh, it's going to put you in a small oversize. It's going to put you in an oversized category. So they're likely going to have you ship that item from China to three different places. So you can imagine if you're shipping in 200 items and you have to ship to three separate places, how expensive your shipping costs will be. Ocean Freight's at an all-time high right now. It's never been higher. And it's it's ridiculously expensive right now, even for Ocean Freight, as opposed to what it used to be. And then on top of that, you've got to ship it to three separate places. So you can imagine your 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 shipping costs can be astronomical. They can be sometimes more than the product itself, um, which is not typical. But sometimes, like I, I'll give you an example. I pay for one; it's like thirteen dollars. My shipping costs like eleven. It's stupid high, and it, it actually ruined. Um, there was a miscalculation. I, I didn't think it's just the size is big. So I didn't think it would be that expensive. I calculated it much lower. And I have another product that's similar that I'm paying maybe $7, $7 for, for shipping for each item. And because there's more less product in each box and it's bigger, uh, just size-wise, not necessarily weight-wise, but size-wise, it, it cost me a lot more. We're talking like $11 versus $7. And that really killed my margins. So my goal now is just to kind of get rid of that product and move on from it uh that was a huge miscalculation on my part i didn't think that size would make a difference it's really hard to tell sometimes so the smart thing to do would be to get don't make any assumptions get your forwarder or your supplier to quote you a shipping cost prior and give them the worst case scenario so for example take what they've been having me do they have me ship to pennsylvania they have me ship to michigan and they'll have me ship to like north carolina like all eastern or northern places from California, right, and, and all very far away. So, like, your shipping cost, or New Jersey, your shipping cost will be, like, astronomical. So keep that in mind when you're doing an oversize. It has to be worth it. The numbers have to make sense. Another option you can do is, of course, for sale by merchant, which many larger items are done for sale by merchant through 3PL, or third-party logistics, if you don't know what that means, meaning you ship it into your own warehouse. Maybe you have a warehouse in California, and that warehouse in California will ship it out to anybody else in the country once they buy it. And honestly, the I'm going to give you an example. Um, this was a, kind of a project I was working on with somebody. It fell through. It didn't work out. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> this is a kid's desk doing gangbusters, man. Like, unbelievable, uh, this specific type of desk. There's a couple variations of it. You know, if you can get a desk like this in FBA, you'll probably do very well. Now, there was nobody with high, high um, reviews when I looked at this. Like, not really at all. And even still... You can see there's some with like three reviews. Um, like this guy, 150 bucks. He's selling 67 of these a day. This guy is selling 113 of these a day at 150. Now, that would be a tough price to launch at. If your FBA, more like 180 or 190 would have to probably be your price point. This particular seller is from China, so they're probably getting it dirt cheap. Um, but they're selling an FBA, and you can see what that does. Many of these are FBM. Um, so they're for sale by merchant and it's going to be cheaper to ship that way because there's less of a storage cost and it costs less to transport it to all these crazy warehouses all over the country and on top of that usually the, the handling and shipping costs are a little cheaper or about the same so you but you save money in the long run because you're not shipping all over the place and it's usually people do expect these bigger items to be fbm anyway if you can get them into fba for sale by amazon you can do do gangbusters, really just crush it, you know. Um, look at this, just a little wooden desk. I mean, $114, and it's doing 78 a day. So, you know, desks are really, you know, because of COVID, are really huge right now, especially kids' desks. So here's, I think they may be FBM. They get really bad reviews, and they're still doing six a day. Um, so, you know, if you were able to get in a desk like this, 
I, I, I don't want to say it's guaranteed, but you, you almost certainly would sell it. So like our differentiation was to have a little face on there of like, um, there was ones with little animal faces and to do a different color. Like you have a green one for a frog face, or you could have like a, you know, a brown one and a bear face on it, uh, that type of thing. So yeah, their ratings are just really bad. And I don't know why I'm not going to look at it. The point being is a lot of these are FBM. They're actually prime, so they're not FBM. But if you're FBM, even a lot of people expect these bigger items to be FBM, and they're okay, especially when there's a backup. Like I'm pretty sure they're FBM. Okay, so I don't know how they're selling it so cheap. Wow, I have no idea. But anyway, so yeah, you could probably have made decent money. Now, how do you tell what your fees would be for an oversized item like this? <clears throat> so what I would do is I would take I took this ace right here. I plugged it in. There's under Seller Central. There's a revenue calculator. Okay, so you can go there and you can do um, this revenue calculator. One second. And <clears throat> what you can do is you can put in. I just put in if we were selling it for like 180, and I put in like kind of what our fees might be, uh, average inventory. And it just gives you an idea of what your profit would be. So you'd have to make the numbers work. But this gives you, if you're fulfilling it yourself or if you're doing Amazon fulfillment, you can play around with these numbers and you can figure out kind of, you know, what it would be. Now, here's your weight right here. Uh, it gives you an idea. Now, let's say there's a product that's not existing that you want to get an idea of. Find something very similar with a similar weight and dimensions. And that will give you a good idea of how to, you know, calculate your, your uh, you know, your, your overall. Also... If you go into um, the product itself and you come down, um, there's also the, the, yeah, the revenue calculator from Helium. So let's just say like we were going to sell it for $169.99. We could probably sell a few that way. Uh, it gives you your fees. And then there's your net, $112. So you'd have to figure out, okay, if I'm shipping it and if I'm, Buying the unit, let's say it costs eighty dollars. What's that leave for me? Maybe thirty-two dollars and some. You know, what's it leave for me in profit? So that's kind of how you do it. You talk to your supplier, you find out what you're going to pay for each item, you find out what you're going to pay for shipping, give them a worst-case scenario, multiple warehouses, or think about doing a for sale by merchant uh, through your own uh, own third-party logistics warehouse, and figure out your total cost compared to what your net would be based off of what your selling price is going to be. And that will give you a pretty good idea of where you're going to be. And that's a good way to figure it out. So there are huge consequences to doing an oversized item. But also, you can make a ton of money because a lot of people just simply don't do it, right? Um, so that's something to consider. Now, standard size, like I said, get it in a cardboard box. Get it under that size and weight. That's the best way to do it. Um, and that's what I would encourage you to do. Get it under the size, under, under this weight, under this size. <clears throat> I have one item that was going to be over the 18 inches like almost for sure it just is over 18 inches so what i was able to do <clears throat> excuse me i was able to cross over the item to put it under 18 inches which shaved off a few inches there so um that was really big it really helped uh save me a lot of money and this would be your you don't have to worry about this but this, this would save you a ton of money, as much as $4 a unit. So you can see how that can be extremely um, helpful. So I definitely encourage you guys to check out the um, check out the, the calculator. Uh, also, you can use Helium's. That I usually use this. It's you know It gives you a good idea of uh, kind of how to, to calculate it out. And there's, there's a bunch of different things you can do. So... Um, Hopefully that helps you guys out, and this has a light on it. It's kind of neat. If tell you what, if you could still get this desk over, it'd probably do still really well. But it's very expensive to do just a couple hundred units. Um, you know, you'd almost have to have a bunch shipped over at once in the container, or save you a bunch on shipping, and then use your own warehouse, or just have a bunch shipped over. Take a, it would be a more of a, a bigger risk for sure because you'd be buying a lot of units. You'd buy a whole container yourself, would save you a bunch on shipping, and have it shipped over, and then you could obviously sell it for a lot cheaper so you know it'll be a much bigger risk um if you're going to do it that way so you gotta kind of figure out if it's going to work if the numbers are going to work 
don't fall in love and i was talking to somebody about this and, and don't fall in love uh with a product if you've done the research you do all the numbers and it's not working and you want to sell it at this price but that's just not giving you enough of a return don't get caught up on that there's so many products out there i know you put the work in if you do that and i was talking to a student about this look if the numbers don't work don't get mad just understand that they're not working and either you have to reconsider your price point or you have to say hey i need to move on from this uh don't get caught up on any one product there's too many opportunities out there to get caught up on any one product um just give you guys a quick update on myself because i haven't been on it so long um i i had a really good prime days uh the first day was about normal a little bit over um i decided not to do much advertising on the on the on the what is it, 14th i think um decided not to do much advertising on the 14th and i really had a great day i almost did 4k in sales um which was great but then the next day yesterday 15th i did really bad <clears throat> when i say bad i don't mean to sound make it sound like i'm ungrateful or whatnot but I did about 1700 in sales when i was averaging over 2000 so i was a little upset i tried less advertising that day it didn't work out well uh I seem to be off to a good start today so far so maybe it's just uh you know that that slump after after the uh you know the big prime day so i almost made a thousand dollars in profit that day just about a thousand which is really good um so i really can't complain um there's other issues i have going on we're going to lose our health insurance so that's a bigger issue for us right now and that's kind of why i haven't been on there's been a lot of things going on but uh we're working on that so i hope you guys have a blessed and wonderful day please like and subscribe if you are so inclined to do that and i hope this video guy helps you guys out as far as you know the difference between like oversized and standard anybody can look this up uh this calculator anybody can look this information up right here uh this will give you an idea and always try to get it in the standard if you can because it's going to save you a boatload of money all right guys have a great day and uh we'll see you again thanks